In this video, I'll be showing you this script that creates a set of stairs with a landing and also landing at the top. I've made sure to add all of the dimensions, points, and relevant information that you may need for creating a uh, set of stairs like this. Now, I do not go over all of the steps on this because a lot of the things that I have in the script took a very long time, and I don't know if you guys would want to sit through an entire thing. And to be honest, a lot of the times I go back and things like this. So what I'll be doing is breaking this up into smaller segments. This way we can you can understand how this is achieved um, through smaller exercises where you can learn techniques and you can apply them on any other design. So with that being said, let me share with you how this comes together. What I wanted to keep in mind for this design was I wanted to have a set of stairs that is very accurate um, and also has the details that I typically look for on a set of stairs. We have the tread, of course, then we have some nosing. Then at, on the side here, we create a side rail, and this is actually what holds the guardrail and the handrail. And I've also extended it out here and put a dimension. And then at the top, I have the ability to just create one of these landings. This way you know exactly where you land. And we have the landing here in the middle. The reason why this would be useful is if you have a larger design, typically you are required to have a landing before you have, um, if you have more than 20 steps, or if you go to a vertical elevation higher than 10 feet, then you need a landing. So that's what I wanted to do here. So let's jump in and show you all of the parameters so we can change the treads using the slider. Then we have the stair width. So that's going to be from the center. We can have the tread height. Then we have the tread length. And one of the portions that was a bit tricky, but I was able to achieve was this jog, which overhangs the last tread nosing by a specific amount. And so those things here, we have the nosing, so how much it can overhang. Typically you would see that not being too large, but the drop can be a little bit different. We'll go here to two. Fillet is going to round off the edges of the set of stairs. Then we, when we move on to the guardrail, we have the height, of course. The minimum, we have basically the slider, so the slider can take care of that. Um, and we can raise it or lower this depending on what we're trying to do. Then we have the side panels here. So we have the diameter, the extrusion at the top, the extension of the guardrail at the top, and that's critical if you're doing anything that's code compliant. Um, that is something that is required, is to have an extension of 12 inches, I think, at the top and bottom. Uh, side rail extrusion, so that's going to be this portion. And that's how much it goes up. So we can increase that depending on if you, you know, want a bigger gap here. Let's move on to the side rail. So this is the height, the width. So how wide this is going to be. And we have the jog here. This is a portion that I was that I mentioned that was a bit had a few things to do, and so it goes past it down like this, or it can just jog like this, creating the guardrail start at a different location. Then we have the connection offset. So this is going to be going to be this portion. How much it offsets from the outside and that's also something that is code is the let's see here the how much it offsets from the wall that's also important you don't want it to be too little or else you can't really grasp your hand around it then we have the mid landing line length which is also you can see it here with the dimension but of course here with the slider we can see what that is and increase it or decrease it so I think 36 inches is the smallest you can do, but for it to look kind of proportional, I think 48 should be okay. Let's move on to the landing overhang, so the landing length, the landing overhang. And I made sure to tie these together so that when I slide this over to the right, everything is 
moving over and we don't have anything overlapping. And lastly, we have here the dimensions, which we can change the size of the overall dimension size, the dimension of the treads, um, and then the offset. So all of these will help you organize the offsets and things like this. We don't want the dimensions to be too large. Otherwise, they don't fit within the arrows. Yeah. So with that, we have an awesome set of stairs that we can do a smaller set. Select this, middle click and bake. Now we can take this over to the side and create iterations. So let's say if that was 10, well, we can always increase this to 10. And technically, if we go 10 and then a landing and then 10, well, we can go up to 20 before we need a landing. So if we go here to a maximum of 20, we can change this and increase it. And this is 20 steps, landing and 20 steps. So if you have a large building where you're trying to tie the floor to the second floor and you need a landing, this would be the perfect set of stairs. Um, and we can, of course, change the width if we have um, more people coming up and down. So with that, hopefully you found that interesting. I will have this completely for free under the, the free tab, free resources tab on my website um, for this week before the next script comes out. So make sure to subscribe and stay up to date with the stuff because I will be posting a lot of cool scripts that will be useful for those of you that are into architecture. So thank you very much for being here. Hopefully you found that interesting and I hope to see you on the next video.